So, a while back I was looking through eBay and I found a listing for 31 graphics cards. The bidding was at about $80, but from what I could tell, it was worth much more than $80. For one specific reason that I'll get into later. A lot of the cards are older, which I bought them because I use and test them on this channel, and when you buy them bulk, you get cheaper prices. So yeah, let's unbox this and see what $100 gets you when you buy a lot of 31 graphics cards off eBay. So, I ordered this a while back and I haven't unboxed it yet. It is open, but that's just because I ripped off the packaging information and I I wanted to make sure it was actually what I ordered. Aside from that, I did not look too closely at the cards in here. Although, there is one that I'm definitely excited to see. We'll get to that one first. And this. This is the reason why I bought this lot of graphics cards. This is a 1070 that supposedly doesn't work, but I'm not too sure about that based on the buyer's description. Even if it turns out not to work, I can still sell this for anywhere between $80 to $150 on eBay alone, which means that this card alone, reselling it as broken, would have paid for all these other cards. I am going to attempt to first repair it, but if it doesn't get repaired, I'm going to sell it. And the next card we're getting is an AGP card, actually. I currently don't have any computers that even have an AGP slot, but I am currently looking to build one. This one is the FX 5600 Ultra with 128 megabytes of VRAM, it looks like. Hopefully it works. This really is quite the undertaking. There's a lot of cards here. What is this? This is a NVIDIA NVS 315. It doesn't look like it's worth much, but hey, as long as it has DX12, we can do something with it. I'm guessing that this one is an HD 6350? Eh, we'll find out later. Here we have a 5450, it looks like. It doesn't say on the card, actually. The next one up is a, oh, a second of these cards. The next card we get is one of these once again. The next card is, it's passively cooled. It's horrendously dirty. I don't wanna, I should get gloves, but I don't have any. This is a HD 4350. You guys know how I feel about the 4000 series, but it's a very interesting passive cooler. Not sure what to think about this. The next card seems to be a, oh, this is a, this is a Quadro K600. The K620 I recently did a video on just died for no reason, so this should be a suitable replacement for that. The next one, oh wow, this is, this is a very heavy and large card. This is an HD 4870. It honestly, just taking a look at the back of the PCB, it's in pretty good condition. But due to its lack of DX12 support, it really isn't that capable nowadays. The next one is a GeForce 8800 GT, the Alpha Dog Edition. Uh, some interesting branding on these older cards. Okay, and then we got two of more or less. We had this car earlier. This one seems to be a little bit different, but a very similar cooler. Oh, this is new. It's a smaller cooler. Generally the same small ATI form factor though. Once again, low end and probably very useless. The next car, oh my. This is an interesting design. It is the X1300 with 256 megabytes of VRAM. You know what? It might be a higher end model actually, given that it has a, I want to say beefy cooler, but it has a design on it, okay? Pretty colors make graphics cards go faster. That's just how it works. Why do you think we have RGB on 3090s? The next card is very nicely wrapped up, actually. This is another AGP card, and it is in, I want to say, a very good condition, but it does have a bit of dust on it. The next card is a, I, a 7450, I'm guessing. It's old and crappy. You know, unboxing all these cards really puts into perspective just how many 31 graphics cards are. This is like half a year worth of content for me, if not more. And here we have two of the same cards, 6350s, I'm guessing. I wonder if I can crossfire those two, actually. That would be interesting, but I doubt it. What is this? Is, it, is, is this Firewire? I don't want this. I have no use for this. This is e-waste. And we've already seen this card before. And we have, what? It, okay, it's a graphics card. It has DVI, I'll give it that. But I can't give it much else. Oh my god, this is the definition of a media accelerator. The next video I make might be on this card, just because of how pathetic it looks. <laughs> The next card looks a little more interesting. It is the GT620 Synergy Edition with one gigabyte of VRAM on a 64-bit bus width. It has mini HDMI. I've not seen a graphics card with that in quite a while. And it has two DVI ports. Eh, I'm looking forward to testing this. This looks interesting. This is a, it's a two gigabyte card. An R7240? I hope this card works. This has legitimate resale value. Okay, so there's not too many cards left, but I think we already saw this one. The next card we get is a passively cooled card and it looks completely useless. From reading the back, I couldn't find exactly what the model was straight off the bat, but it has the old NVIDIA logo, which 
Does not bode well. Is this, uh, has DMS 59. I'm not too fond of these cards. The next one is a, it's this one again. We've seen this like three times now. The next card is a 6350. There's this card again. We've seen a couple of these already. If I can crossfire these, oh, that'd be amazing. But there's no way they were designed for that. We have an HD 4600 with one gigabytes of VRAM. That's, I don't want to say impressive, but it's better than I was expecting. Yeah, I set my expectations pretty low. And somehow there's still, got another Firewire card. Man, what even is this connector? This is before I was born, probably. <laughs> Next card we have is a, I don't know what this is. This is a, a 4670 with so one gigabyte of DDR2 VRAM. And last but not, it's not last. Uh, <laughs> one of the last cards, we, ooh, an HD 5750. I've not worked with the 5000 series at all yet. This one has one gigabyte of DDR5 memory. It looks to be in relatively good condition. It doesn't look too dirty. And based on the relatively acceptable packaging, this might be promising. Oh my God, I, I really saved the best for last, didn't I? This looks like a science experiment someone in elementary school would do on a breadboard. I have no clue what this is, but I'll figure it out shortly enough and let you know. I laid all the cards out and I just finished researching which cards are which and it's an interesting batch we have. A very varied batch across many different years. To begin, we have these two completely useless Firewire cards that I don't know anybody who needs these nowadays. Here we have two HD 3470s and we have an HD 3450, but they both share the same cooler, but they do have different uh, outputs. Here are three HD 7450s, and here are three HD 6450s. So I had it flipped around which one was which, but close enough. This one is an HD 4550. Uh, these are two more HD 6450s, just a different style cooler, or different style PCB than those, the same chip inside and specs, I assume. Uh, and then we have three HD 4890s that I believe have one gigabyte of VRAM each, which means they might have some capabilities. This one turned out to be something called a silicone image graphics card, which I have heard of before. It's by Dell and it's very underpowered and documentation for it online is very limited. I couldn't even find how much VRAM it has if it has any VRAM, but just based on how basic the PCB is, I don't think it's gonna have much in terms of performance. And that card all the way back there is the HD4350. This one I identified earlier, it's AGP, it's the FX 5600 Ultra. And this one is quite old and I do hope it works. It's the ATI X300 SE, which is way before my time. This one is an HD4670, uh, while this one is an HD4650. This one is a Radeon 9800 Pro, which I can see why they would try to preserve it. From what I can find online, it seems to be a very well-known card. This one obviously is an HD 4870, and that's the 1070 that supposedly doesn't work that I'm gonna be trying to fix. This one I really couldn't find much information on. I looked up a bunch of the serial numbers and yeah, not much comes up for it. The only thing I can really gather about this from what I can find online is that it's by Nvidia and that it likely has 128 megabytes of VRAM. That's gonna be interesting to test. This graphics card is the NVS315. This one is the R7240. This one is the K600 I stated earlier. This one is the XT1300 Pro. That's an interesting bracket on the back. I've never seen that design. This one's a GT620. This one's a 5750. And that one's an 8800 GT. Yeah, quite an interesting spread of graphics cards. I got M2 Firewire cards. They're, they, they don't count. I'm not including them in the shot. <laughs> So yeah, we got a very interesting array of graphics cards here from a bunch of different ages. I'm looking forward to testing them and I'm looking forward to reselling them because I can probably make a little bit of money off this. One last bit that I wanted to add to the video was the actual pricing of all these cards and what they're realistically worth in terms of resale value on eBay because it does seem that I've made a profit. To begin, currently I believe the GTX 1070 is actually in a perfectly working condition. It installs the drivers fine, it gets 90% of user benchmark, it can run Fallout 4 how it should, it's performing like a normal 1070. I'm going to do additional testing to make sure that it's not broken in some weird way, but as of right now, I'm just gonna include it as for parts in the pricing. Although the GTX 1070 is worth the most, even in a broken condition, the 9800 Pro is actually worth quite a bit of money too. Uh, I listed 60 because that was like the lowest price I saw, 
but in a working condition, the card can sell for anywhere between $100 to $200. I do believe that it was an older high-end version that is just kind of hard to get nowadays, so that makes sense why it's so expensive. I have the quantity listed as well. Is it worth it? Um, I'm not going to be selling the cheap cards individually. Like, I'm not trying to sell three 8490s individually because eBay fees will just eat into the profits. So anything that I don't have deemed worth it to sell individually, I'm just going to bulk together and sell for like 50, 60 bucks. So with all this added up, the base value without the bulk items is already about $275. That plus the expected bulk value should bring it to about 300, but after eBay fees and taxes and maybe I'll do free shipping here or there, I should make about $275. However, I haven't tested any of these cards yet, so I don't know if they work. This is assuming that all of them, except the 1070, are in a working condition. So yeah, it looks like I might have actually made a bit off of this and I didn't waste my money for once. Either way, roll the outro. Speaking of which, if you want to support the channel, there's some donation links in the description in the forms of cryptocurrency. So yeah, I'll be making videos on all these cards, so stay tuned. If you like the video, leave a like. If you want to subscribe, then go for it. It genuinely helps me out. Regardless, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the video. Adios.